Our daily Bible reading for December 31st. Our reading today comes from the final chapter of the New Testament, Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, we'll begin reading in verse 1. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And He said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent His angel to show His servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. When I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to see the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and the murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. A few thoughts for today. <clears throat> I've often thought that our modern interstate highway system in the United States is one of the seven wonders of the modern world. It not only provides quick and easy access to nearly any point we wish to reach on the contiguous 48 states, but it provides us with relative safety as well. All along the way, every effort has been made to give warnings to potentially dangerous situations. Signs of warning alert us to dangers ahead, well in advance. Signs of warning are there to keep us safe. They are clearly defined and visible for us to see. Jesus gives us solemn warnings with consequences for ignoring those signs. When Jesus testifies, He states clearly and exactly what His banner and emblem have said all along. Faithful and true is He in His words. Revelation 3.14, 19.11, 21.5, and 22.6 tell us this. The message that John is to deliver is so important that not one word is to be changed. The responsibility to pass this message on to the seven churches is imperative. They must hear the words of this prophecy. But remember, there is a blessing in this book for you and I as well. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near. Chapter 1 and verse 3. We will do well to find encouragement for our battles today. Remember, Satan has been loosed for a short while, and he has gathered Gog and Magog with him to do battle against us. It was the Apostle John who said in his previous letter, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. 1 John 4.4 4. 
While our journey through the New Testament is completed for the year, we are far from the journey's end. If God shall permit the sun to rise but one more day, make a commitment to now to search again in the morrow another portion of His Word. Be as the Bereans were, more noble for having searched the Scriptures daily. These devotionals should never replace the reading of God's Word. They are but dim reflections of a human mind that searches the Scriptures for treasures untold. In all things, let these be proved by the Word of God. Above all, praise God for His blessings and His providential care. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 150 and verse 6. May God have richly blessed you in your journey through His Word this year, and even more as you begin anew tomorrow, Lord willing. A question of the day. Have you made provisions to begin a new journey tomorrow, Lord willing, in the new year? And a thought to meditate on this day. Consider these three aspects of approaching God's Word. Read, study, and meditate. Each one carries its own rewards. To read for pleasure or for reading's sake has its reward. To study carries with it the idea of digging deeper for meaning, while meditating is to ponder the concepts within ourselves. Yes, each has its own blessing. Try to incorporate each into your life as you explore the endless paths that God's Word will lead you into. And those are our thoughts for today, December 31st.